go ahead and roll with the roll call. Um, Commissioner Richard Conway, that is me, I'm here. Commissioner Parsons, co-chair, I'm here. Commissioner Kerr, absent. Commissioner Martin, absent. Commissioner Rowden, absent. Commissioner Stackhouse, here. Present. And Commissioner Layden, or McLeod, I think was also the former arbitrator. Yes, here, thank you. Hi, welcome, thank you. All right. Uh, thanks, thanks everybody for being here on an irregular day. Uh, normally we are the third Monday, but as the holiday is next week, uh, we, we did move this meeting. So appreciate your flexibility, everybody. Uh, if we can move into the approval of the minutes, I was absent that meeting, but I read through it. Again, props for you guys getting out of here at 455 with the uh, meaningful discussions and everything. But uh, anybody want to, who was at the meeting? Anybody have any edits for the note or for the minutes? No. Anybody want to make a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner Stackhouse. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Hearing none, it sounds like we have a unanimous uh, approval of those minutes. Let's go ahead and roll into public participation. As always, I will read this section so I don't miss up, mess up anything. This portion of the meeting is for items that are not on the agenda. The commission cannot act on items presented during the public participation of the agenda. The commission is prohibited by the open meeting law from discussing or considering the item until the item is officially placed on an agenda. And we are asking that comments are limited to five minutes. Is there any member of the public that wishes to participate in this here part of this uh, um, agenda? Thank you. <laughs> All right, no public to participate today. Well, I'll hold that out for next month. We have an action item. We need to elect a chair and co chair for the 2023 uh, year. So I'll kick this off. Uh, we should have done this in January, and I forgot to put it on the agenda. So if it's here now, you can um, keep. Who you have, there's no requirement to change, it's just an opportunity if you like switch things up. I was trying to convince Ricky to continue on. I would yeah, he doesn't want to. I'll nominate Ricky. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> second for that. You can, well, you can. but if he doesn't want to, then, then someone can nominate me, and I would be happy to take it on the chair. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I think you guys should honor myself. <laughs> I'm good with either way. I I I, I like being uh, on the, the on the commission. I, I've enjoyed serving as a chair. Um, it's it's not a huge time commitment being chair. Like it doesn't add that much extra uh, really anything. So uh, if you want, do you want to? We can swap. I could be your co-chair, your chair, or uh, or we throw Mr. Sackhouse or another commission. If there's another commissioner that wants the experience of co-chair chair, I would obviously. Stand, step aside uh, to allow that to happen. I don't want to get anybody's way of advancement. Um, but the only reason I don't want to do it is because I'm trying to uh, get the friends mm -hmm. going. And so I'm, I, mean, I think we have a tentative date of the 22nd for to meet with Regina and kind of kick things off. <clears throat> that's that's your priority. That's your that, well, and it's not really a priority. I just feel like that's kind of. <laughs> I'm fine with that too, but so. All right. Well, I'm I'm going to keep it the event. Uh, it, it, instead of you know, no reason. Maybe co-chair Parsons. We can just split some. You know, you can run a meeting or a couple throughout the year. Well, just and, and, just and, a few of year. Yeah, that's fine. Give you more experience doing that. But yeah. if, 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 unless uh, I don't want to ignore um, Commissioner Layden on the on the teams. Uh, do you have a, a preference or desire to uh, chair or co-chair? I think you guys are. Doing an excellent job as chair and co chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I second that. Well said. Yeah, everybody here has a <laughs> career in politics, apparently. <laughs> uh, excellent. So, uh, yeah, there's no. Yeah, everybody's good with that, but we'll just keep it as is. Okay. okay. All right. In the minutes that you agreed to stay with chair Conway and co chair Perfect. And I think in my. Do you want to come off this year? So, my I, I, that's why I actually had the yeah, last you, you do expire in August. You're welcome to reapply. Okay. Um, your 
first term started in 2020, and it was a yep. partial term, so you've actually got two more terms if you want to decide. Two more two like, years. Two, two more three years. Three years. Um, and council three years. So I just have to put in a new application by August? By August, yep. And then um, the council will be on break July, most of July. Yep. So hopefully we can get you on the agenda in August, but you can serve until the reappointed or so. It's your guess. Okay. Yeah, that's what that would be. Okay. So reapply in August. And would it be beneficial to reapply in June if I'm in? Or? I would go ahead and put it in. Okay. Because no harm in doing it early if yeah. I. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Then, yeah, I will take care of that. Excellent. Well, thank you, everybody. Great discussion. Thank you. Moving on to uh, budget and project updates and new requests for FY23.4. Okay. Remember how popular these were, like especially in Alta. Yeah. Yeah. I, I went on Amazon and bought a two pack just because I was like, oh, "Wow, colors would be at all times." Yeah. Man, power. <laughs> the power of the pen, man. The red was really the red's the biggest one. That's yeah. the that's that's the one. All right. Um, hey, Autumn, online. Can you please confirm that you can see this? Okay, the the whole slide. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So what we wanted to, um, at the request um, of you all and suggestion of us, obviously you asked for some project updates, you asked for budget updates and what our priorities are for this next fiscal year. So we're kind of rolling them all into one and you also requested some information on open space so uh, that's why Robert is here, and thank you, Robert, for joining us. So what we're going to do is go through first um, your priorities, just so that you remember. Um, trying to figure out which one I can see better. <laughs> um, all right, so you'll recall from your priority exercise that we came up with the first um, seven to 10 that we went through and decided to try to budget. So this is a reminder of what those priorities were. The top priority was flight structure replacements, then existing restroom upgrades or new, including Heritage Square. Uh, then there was some Hal Jensen improvements, um, some smart irrigation add-ons, I'll note, and I'm, what I'm getting ready to show you is that we've been able to collect these projects, issue our five-year plan, and they are, many of these are now funded. So that's the super duper exciting news that I can barely contain, because that's a first for us and for the commission. Um, I will say you will not see the smart irrigation system add-ons, even though it's a priority. This will be handled in the Noresco contract that the city is working on. This is an energy conservation project uh, where the savings will pay for the projects themselves over time. Um, this is one of their priority projects as well. So that's how we, we will be achieving that goal and not have to fund it out of KDB recreation funds. Um, so we talked about Cal Jensen, uh, improvements. We have not funded the restroom upgrades. We just don't have enough information right now on that one. 
Um, but we did fund the Hal Jensen Recreation Center HVAC. Um, we also started saving up some funding, believe it or not, for Continental Park uh, softball fields. Even if it just starts getting us one or two fields at a time, at least we can start that construction. We also have some funding for the Burton of Annex phases and Honduras of Park renovation post flooding. So I will take us to our five year capital plan to go through that with you. And then I'm going to turn it over to our partners here. We've got Gino to talk about parks. We'll have Tyrone talk about recreation. We'll have Robert talk about open space. And then I think I close us out. What I'm going to um, make you look at first though, and Josh is probably going to love this. I'm not so sure about the rest of you. And of course, it's not going to show it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to make you look at our five year plan. Is this presentation specific to the commission? Was it something engaged with the council? Uh, or? So, this is what will be going to council for approval. This five year plan uh, in April. Um, because we're meeting fund balance and we are, you know, you, the commission is um, giving us the priorities, that's really the main approvals that we need to take it to council. So, even though we still have our own budget presentations to the city manager coming up in February, later February, early March. Um, this five year plan is pretty much a done deal. What I'll go over at the end for you is some of our additional budget priorities that are outside of this five year plan. So, for those of you that don't, oh, don't know, um, pros or specifically parks and recreation gets 33% of the BBB tax allocation. So this is the bed board beverage tax that's charged at restaurants, um, alcohol, hotels, campgrounds. Um, so that additional tax that is charged, we get 33% of it. The rest of it goes to economic development, arts and sciences, tourism, and beautification. We get the biggest chunk of it. And the idea is that um, some of those other, well, like economic development and tourism, three dollars in, and then beautification, arts and sciences, and parks and rec is able to use those dollars to benefit the community and those that live here. The good news is, <clears throat> this is all good news, honestly. Um, the this revenue source is doing really, really well, really well. So. I think we've all probably seen there's no lack of tourism in Flagstaff, um, but that's turning into really good things for us. Um, can everyone see? Can you guys read this? Okay, let me make it. Yeah. I'll just try to scroll without making you too sick. The way that this is set up is with fiscal years across the top. The reason they call it our five year plan is because we're planning for next budget year and the four years out. But you'll also see information for this budget year and actuals from last budget year. So, what um, typical to a five year plan is shows our revenues first. So, this is that BBB tax. You can see that's the most um, of our revenues. And then a few other general things. Um, and those revenues, these are estimated out through five years. Um, our finance and revenue folks do this. And I can tell you over the years, they have proven to take a very conservative approach. And this continues to be a conservative approach. They um, have planned for a recession. I think in this time frame, so for the next couple of years, they're being pretty, um, 
pretty conservative, just in case. <laughs> And then the lower part of the five year plan goes through the expenditures. So how the funds are going out. Um, on the next page, I'll show you the details of this. So we'll get there. But um, we've got transfers out to general fund. This is uh, the operational expense for parks and recreation. So you'll see there's a transfer out to maintain um, foots trails to operate our parks team and to operate our recreation team. The big change on, well, I'll go through that in a little bit. So I'm gonna skip down the second page here. And this is where the exciting stuff happens. Just remember that those columns at the top based on years. Um, try to do this so that you can see. Uh, the exciting thing is this year we were able to start, um, we set aside just a pot of money for deferred maintenance rather than specific projects. We just left it pretty broad like that. So that as things come up that we need funding for, we've got a place that we can go get it. Some uh, examples of being able to do to use this fund this year include um, we needed new scoreboards at Fort Park. Um, we needed, well, this spring will happen. We needed a pretty expensive preventive maintenance program, really like a, a once all over check of the cooling towers at Jay Lively to the tune of like $40,000. We have a funding source that's deferred maintenance. Um, if we had something else break that needed to be replaced, this is what we're going to use these funds for. Even if we had a vehicle go down, a piece of fleet that we weren't expecting, that we were hoping could last another couple of years, I would ask to use these funds to replace that sooner than later. Your desk announcement, sorry. For something like fleet, we would probably go through the budget team. So that's an internal approval process. Um, but for the most part, they're like, you've got it in the five year plan, the five year plan is approved. It's generally a capital project, go do it. So, so like you follow city purchasing requirements, like quotes, and Absolutely. you know you, you still have to follow all the, the all the established procedures. But uh, you do have more or less authority to spend. Uh, we would, and if it's over fifty thousand, it would go to council. Okay. Or it would, yeah, if it's over fifty thousand, it still has to go to council. Oh. The nice thing about this, you'll hear me say that a lot because I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> The dark. Um, we're able to schedule that out ongoing, meaning an ongoing means it happens every year. And this actually goes out, you can't see it, but it goes out an extra five years. So this is ongoing in our 10 year plan, all accounted for in the bottom uh, balance. Um, the other thing that we are programming ongoing is your number one priority the play structure replacements starting this year and ongoing through the next four, um, well, starting next year, technically, um, and then going through the five and 10 year plan as well. Those are ongoing expenses that gets us out of this cycle of replacing all of our play structures every 20 years. And then they all come due at the same time. And then we're like, we can't replace them all. This helps us spread those out. Now, Gina will tell you that this gets us maybe one really nice one or a harsh like a big one or maybe a one or two small like two to five year old um, kind of smaller play structures these will be replaced based on priority order um based on age ability to get parts um and trying then also to make sure we're meeting all sides of town you know that was a concern previously. 
We have the PROS master plan budgeted. Um, this is something that we are starting work on this year. This actually is a general fund funded project. Um, we will not get this done this year, but we'll carry it forward until we get it. This year, um, we also had put in the 600,000 for a grant match, just in case, and we had to start kind of throwing a five-year plan together last year without a lot of time to think about it or have your priorities. Um, so we put it in this grant match. This is gonna go away, as you can see in the future, but it doesn't mean we're not gonna still go for grants and get grant match. Um, that's the beauty of having projects funded in the five-year plan. We could use these funds as grant match if we get a grant for that project. And then we would budget for the grants up in the revenue part. All right. So getting over time and everything's gonna take us a Is anybody sick today? Thomas? <laughs> Um, so the exciting part here, so this was your top priority, the play structure replacement. One of the other top priorities was the Heritage Square restroom. We've got that funded for next year. Um, I think what uh, Amy may have presented to you, the idea here is to get one of those um, self-cleaning, all-inclusive units, nice looking. You see them all over Europe, Portland. It's actually the Portland Blue that we're looking at is the brand. Um, and putting that in Heritage Square, there's a planter there. It's got water, sewers nearby. We could remove the planter, put this in, possibly even hopefully close the alley restrooms that are just a problem. Is the number included there? Was that for the remodel or upgrades to the Sally restroom, or is that this is, is that, for the Portland based on some estimates that Amy's received? Those are not cheap, no, they're not. <laughs> <clears throat> they were honestly less expensive than we thought it was going to be. And the beauty of this five year plan is these are estimates if we get in the next year and it's a little bit more. Um, or the construction cost is a little bit more, you'll see down below that we've got some uh, capacity to um, to pull in and, and finish out that project. Honduras and Park Reconstruction is um, one of the next priorities. This is one of those that we need to take advantage of timing. So as the uh, stormwater structure gets constructed, they have a grant to do that this summer. Hopefully that um, that takes place, then we need to be able to move in pretty quickly. And we have a grant that will come in at about $150,000 um, that uh, will help us rebuild that park. We've been in conversation with the Neighborhood Association. Uh, Amy and I went to their meeting in earlier this month. We're going back to them in March. Um, no, we went to them in January. Um, so there's getting, there's some excitement building around that. Um, so we're excited about that. Thorpe Park Annex, we have 100,000 in the budget. Now we'll carry that forward to help us start with design. Um, oh, sorry, you'll see in the next fiscal year, so not 23, 24, but 24, 25. We budgeted 100,000. This is for the HVAC in um, Hal Jensen. So one of his next priorities, unless you, you say the word sit. We also started putting some more money towards the Thorpe Park Annex to start building up some capacity there. And you'll see in the next fiscal year, so 25, 26, we've got Cheshire Park Fund. We're going to say speed July 1, 24. Is that when this clear 2025? 2025 to 26. And we just scroll up to verify. Oh, isn't, yeah. Yeah. 2025 to 2026. So that would be 
July 25 to June 26. Isn't this exciting? Oh, yeah. You're, <laughs> you're not nearly as excited. Well, that perspective in a normal situation, this is not as well funded. Is that the exciting part about this? This is the first year we've actually been able, and I've been with recreation for I think eight years. Tyrone, you've been here a long time. Can you remember ever hearing about a five-year plan with projects funded in it like this so that we can actually plan ahead? And um, that's the exciting part. And this is before to an increase or, or a more sustainable BBB. Part of it. Part of it. And I'll show you the next part here in, in the next. I section. want to share your excitement, but I just I need a little. I need some time to. Last, last year and the years before, when I have, I, I still always present our five year plan. Um, so, Stephen, you probably remember, but it's not very ex exciting because there's no capacity or it's like $200,000 one time is available after all the other expenses are done. And so then we're like, yay, we get $200,000 one time to spend on one thing. And there's that there's no capacity to plan for the future. What's exciting about this is we've got your priorities scheduled and you can actually see BBB tax funds are going towards your priorities, including priorities that we felt were untouchable without a ballot measure. So that's why it's exciting. Understood. The sport courts down there, is that the pickleball courts for the ocean? It is. And that's going to be done this year. Yes. Um, I'm just going to scroll quick so that you can see for reals. This is the continental expansion here. Uh, we split it over a couple of years because we know realistically it would take um, a couple of years to actually deliver that project and the city's trying to get better and not just plug all the funds in one year. We know it's going to take us multiple years to get through it. What um, you also can't see in the 10 year version of this is we're setting up 5 million over two years in years 9 and 10 to start actually building up the Fort Park. Concept plan. So, is this making sense to you guys as you're seeing this? Can I ask you a question? Yes. What if everything's based on projections right now? What if it comes in either you end up with more or less? So, if we end up with more, yay. Um, it just stays in fund balance, and I'll go over that as we get towards the bottom of of the spreadsheet. If it comes in less, then we just adjust. So we might have to push out like a project that's in year two, we might have to push that out a year. Uh, the city does have a recession plan that um, we put into place when COVID hit. It's actually a really good plan. It works really well. Um, and we would just start. We, it goes through several triggers. Um, based on revenues that are coming in or not, and things that we start doing as a city to accommodate that that lower revenue. I will tell you that we try to continue our capital projects, though, because that's money in the community with uh, the contractors, permits, and supplies, and all of that. Okay, so one of the reasons that we have capacity besides the revenue is doing well. Uh, last year, Amy and I made a really strong pitch to um, cap the, the transfers out for maintenance and operations. So these three line items here. What was happening previously, I think recreation was already capped at 954 every year. And I kept looking at that, but parks was going up. So as minimum wage increases, as benefits for employees and other labor costs increase. Sorry, I'm looking behind you, Gino, it's snowing. <laughs> um, this number for parks operation, which is already large, was just escalating. 
Um, and it was eating away at all of the fund balance that we had. And of course, for um, labor expenses, they were anticipating pretty high costs, right? If so, right? Um, so we started kind of laying it out for the budget team. This is that internal um, team that we go to to present uh, our budget requests. And then they decide what goes into the city manager's budget that goes to city council. And we started saying, the BBB tax is up for renewal in 28. If all that we can show the voters that we have spent that money on for the last 10 years, because this was a switch in the last recession to start taking more of the, these funds for operations and maintenance. If all we can show the voters is that we've been doing maintenance and we do an incredible job, we can show some great stuff, but that's not going to get voters to vote yes to renew. They, they didn't approve that tax for maintenance. They approved that tax for new stuff for the community. Um, and they listened. The budget team listened. They heard it. So this year, they capped it. And that is uh, these numbers that you're seeing here. And that has created, along with the additional revenues coming in, the um, capacity that we're seeing. Excessive capacity, like we're able to actually plan and build out projects. So, what I would always look at and still do are these last three lines. Um, these are funds available. So, even after all the planning that Amy and I did and incorporating your priorities into this five year plan, they did a new estimate of the revenues and came back and we still have an additional so this is your question um what happens if there's more it goes into fund balance and what they're telling us here is that we still have an ongoing capacity of four hundred thousand dollars every year and a hundred and twenty thousand dollars in one time so for now I'm excited enough. I don't want to start trying to spend that money. That'll just stay in fund balance. And you can see this last bit here tells us what our fund balance is. And then we have a 10% uh, minimum fund balance that we have to maintain. This is the real checks and balance as to how we're doing with our planning. And this is how they determine how much is available ongoing versus one time. You can see through this five years, we're looking at this minimum fund, uh, fund balance line here. Um, we're doing pretty well. And this over under line right below it shows us whether we are over or under that minimum. We're doing pretty well until year five. And we, we start to get pretty low. But remember that's after Cheshire, that's after um, continental involvements. Um, but then it rebounds the year after. And so we start saving up again. I mean, we are signing 10, we saved up enough to program our 5 million for our film. That's what's exciting. Is everyone with me on this? <laughs> yeah. This is a first for us and for this commission. Um, I think if Ricky was here, Ricky, if Ryan was here, um, he, I think he's been on the commission the longest and he would probably um, have a, an appreciation as well for how monumental this is. And is the, I mean, did they, does the city talk about like why, why do they think? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if this is a weird The question. revenue estimates. Why, why do they think we are doing so well? It's that the BBB tax is doing well and that we capped our expenses. That was huge because that was going up probably 20% every year. And um, 
Yeah, I just think since COVID as well, like the, the BBB tax has just been doing really well. This is all relative to the fiscal year, chance July 31st. Right. June, June 30th. June 30th. July 1st. Commissioner McLeod, did you have any questions on this? I know this has been a lot. Oh, look, Council Member Harris has joined us as well. I don't have any questions. I um, just want to add thank you. And I'm excited too. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I do have a, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Hi, go ahead. Hi. Uh, thank you. Um, I do have a question. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. So I came in late, so excuse me for that. And if you've already covered this, I apologize. Um, you did say that there was a surplus or there was a overage left. Was that the 400,000? Yes, so we do have Council Member Harris. Um, this, we've got the minimum fund balance, and you can see in the over or under minimum here. I don't know if you can see my cursor kind of going. Yes, up. yes. That's how much is left in the fund balance. Okay, and then what do you do with the fund balance? So that, well, it's restricted funds, so it can only be used for um, for pros, but that's where we would, um, and so I think you were referring to, um, when I was talking about this ongoing capacity of the 400,000. Yes. Yeah. Um, so typically what we would do is come back to the commission's priorities and just keep going down the list and start funding out those projects. That's our plan. We just haven't had time to do that since we got this information. Okay. All right. And um, and is this usual? Do you have this every year? Or is this the, just the last year or so? Because uh, the taxes have increased, the 20%. Is that? I'm sorry, I'm not understanding your question. Okay. All right. So the amount of money, the four hundred thousand that you have, is that you've you've had that every year, or this is the first time you've had it? This is the first time. This is why I'm so ridiculously excited because this is the first year that we have had enough capacity in this fund to be able to plan out projects for okay. next year and in the future. Okay, so all right, yeah. We have any capacity uh, to plan projects. Okay, all right, thank you. You bet, thanks for the questions. Okay. If we're done looking at silly spreadsheets, As much as I like it, <laughs> we'll go back to presentation. Um, and I think, yep, yeah, we'll turn it over to Tyrone. All right, I appreciate that. And so some of that excitement, it, it'll flow directly into some of the things that we need at the rec centers themselves um, that we have been able to utilize like the operating capital for. Some of the things that we have currently going on and see up there at, over at Hal Jensen, uh, this year we're looking to replace the air hockey table. And the ones we typically would get in the past, you get commercial grade, ESC and so on and so forth, but um, a break within a year and, you know, it's a constant replacement. So this year uh, we're getting one coming in that's more like you'll see at the uh, bowling alleys and everything that's uh, real heavy duty and uh, should be a, a nice centerpiece. It's a big attraction for the kids over that way. So that's exciting. And also as far as uh, the 
fitness area and equipment. We're getting a new treadmill. We talked to some of the patrons that utilize it quite a bit. And so uh, the treadmill that we're going to is, is as a the way it's designed, the impact is better than what we have. Um, it's more modern than what we have when it breaks down, parts are hard to get so on and so forth. And so um, that'll be coming in as well. And so the weight room, the equipment over there, we used to get a lot, say, hand-me-downs from here. And now we've really been emphasizing on instead of hand-me-downs, you know, taking pride in that facility and, and showing the people there that you deserve new amenities as well. And so um, that's one of them that'll be coming in soon. Then as we go to the next slide, uh, here at the Aquaplex up on the fitness floor, there's an area that's between uh, the rubber floor and it's carpeted. And so we're going to look to uh, take that out and then make the whole the entire fitness floor uh, rubberized and remove the carpet from up there. And then as uh, Rebecca was talking about earlier in the admin offices. We're going to go ahead and get that recarpeted. We're looking at the carpet tiles. Um, that same is like City Hall. And so that in itself should help with, with costs coming in because the amount that we'll order. And then for replacement, it should be a lot easier, obviously, with the carpet tiles as opposed to um, the whole rolled out carpet that we have in there. So looking, looking forward to getting that going and upgrading that area as well then as we go to the next slide so over at uh josie community and senior center um one of the exercise the equipment pieces that they just recently got is the elliptical and the um, easy entry is real important because some of those uh, machines that you can get it can be very daunting just looking at it. So when we have our senior population coming in and looking to exercise and utilize equipment, we want to make sure that they're able, A, to get on the equipment and B, that the equipment is easy to use. And so the easy entry equipment is not as intimidating and, and it's more inviting. And so it's important for us to make sure that we have those types of equipment pieces, especially at our community and senior center. And then the PM that was mentioned earlier at Jay Lively is huge and um, you know, we have like in the um, exam room, there are boilers and tanks and uh, circulatory pumps that will be PM'd. Uh, in the back, back of the facility, there's uh, the coolers that Rebecca was talking about. There's also uh, three more broilers, two circular pumps, storage tanks, expansion tanks, feeders in the chiller room. Um, then you have your glycol feed tanks, expansion tanks, chillers. So it's a huge project. And basically what the PM is, is to um, repair, replace any of the broken parts, the belts, the valves, the blowers, um, you know, grease the motor, bearings, et cetera. And so um, over the years without having that, you get a lot of buildup. And so you come in and once we get on top of it, hopefully we'll be able to stay on top of it and, and keep things going the way that, you know, the facility deserves and what it, what it costs for and what it needs. And so it's, it's exciting to, to be able to have that funds. And this happens every year. They have a closure um, at Jay Lively. So this will be happening during that time coming up here in May. So with uh, the future projects, um, you know, with, with the priority list being able to be funded through the BBV, we will be able to, um, you know, again, do things such as repairing existing amenities, replacing um, amenities as need be. Then we can also look for new things and, and to new amenities and to new opportunities. And, um, you know, some of the things that we're looking for coming up, like an eSports system over at Hal Jensen. So currently our computer room right now, we're looking in that area to see if we can bring in esports and then also make it a gaming room and then just kind of a lounge and area. And that in and of itself will hopefully just attract different people to the rec center than what we have coming down. And then it'll also hopefully be able to, you know, provide us with some opportunities if we want to say rental opportunities or anything like that with uh, a gaming system being there. Um, 
and then we can just again, hopefully expand that and and really make that you know first class and just just great opportunity for people because in town you don't have a system that's you know kind of a gaming gaming e gaming system and arcade type system together. So you know we look forward to providing that amenity and, and really making that uh, a place to go to. When we look over at JCM, they have uh, their main room, the, the big grand room, and it's uh, broken off by some dividers. And so it's important just with the different activities that they have and the different classes when we get that off, we have noise reduction. So that in the two different areas, you know, it's, it's just not as loud and overlapping. Um, it can be more private and hopefully the rentals can be there. Um, we also look like a new skate sharpener over there and um, the ice rink. And with that, just, just efficiencies, being able to um, get more skates in, do more, sharpen more, all that, just streamlining how everything is done. Um, and then being able to just provide that customer service to people in a timely fashion. So, um, and then here we're looking, I don't know if you guys have seen like say the mirror or the tunnel where you can get your workout and you don't necessarily have to have a personal instructor, instructor right there. It's like personal instruction, but it's right there within the um, apparatus. Um, the mirror looks like you're looking into a mirror and then Tomo, you have the arms that come off. And so just looking at some systems like that to where members can come in and actually get like a personal training without having to have a personal training there. And so, um, just being able to utilize monies to really provide more options and opportunities for what we're looking to do. In the esports, that's more like the uh, the Wii systems or something like that. So you can have um, different gaming systems. You can you can have your uh, traditional systems like your PlayStation, Xbox. Um, then you can have like the Nintendo system as well, and so. You know, the suggestion would be to have some of all of them so that uh, various gamers can come in and still be able to utilize it and, and um, you know, experience it the way that they're accustomed to. So it would be encouraged to have multiple consoles when you come in. And so you have some different gaming stations, of course. And then esports is even um, going into the high schools. I don't believe we're in it yet, but, um, you know, I know down in the valley they have esports leagues through high schools. They're getting scholarships to go to college for esports now. So it's it's a whole industry that's really you know coming up. And so just to be able to have the different consoles, I, I think would be the best way to go. On that same, I, I don't know if you thought about our recommendation maybe talk to YMCA because when they first opened up in that their, their little teen center they had all the brand new systems I don't know whatever happened with that I would I would talk to them about being a drop-in facility and having very expensive game systems and kind of like what their policies and procedures were for that that'd be my it's just a brief recommendation having my experience with YMCA knowing that they had all that down there and I don't know if they still do or what happened to it but they would be a good resource on that on the weight room this is okay that's question. All right. On the weight room, I have a question that remember your fees being super low on all your weight rooms. So now that you are investing capital into upgrading them, are you guys looking at those weight room fees? Uh, and, and is there any thought about you know that cost recovery of okay, now we're going to start investing in this? Maybe the members should pay more than six dollars, whatever, whatever it was. Like, it was really cheap at all those centers, if not free, it's a lot of places. Yeah. So at the last meeting, Chair. That commission did request an overview of the fee schedule and fee policy. We'll be bringing that back later um, in April or May to give us some time. Oh, cool. um, we'll talk about all of our fees, um, but the short answer is no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we we um, have not. The last time we tried to go to council to review our fees, showing them that. We are falling further and further behind on cost recovery because costs continue to increase. Um, they they weren't interested in raising prices to the consumer to our community. So, um, but the city is looking at an overall cost recovery policy, and it, then we'll start looking at reviewing our fees again. But we'll bring that back at another meeting. Um, 
to just focus on um, mostly recreation use. Thank you. Great. That's awesome. Great work. Any other questions for Tyrone? Where did the esports idea come from? <laughs> Excuse me. I'm. Oh, this is uh, Councilwoman Harris. I'm not sure if anybody's monitoring the hands up, but oh. I have a question. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I know it's kind of hard when you're not there in person. So forgive me um, for not being there in person. I hope to make this meeting in person the next time. But my question is, um, with the maintenance uh, program for the Jay Lively uh, Center, and just keep in mind, I'm from Wisconsin where we have ice outside and we don't have to worry about keeping <laughs> floors and keeping our things, you know, up to par because we just skate on the ice on a pond um, in the field and, and we're all good. But with that being said, <clears throat> every so every year, do you have, uh, the 39,000 plus whatever the increase might be to do that maintenance every year, because every year it's going to go up. Correct? Am I? Or do you know? I'm not sure. So the idea, Council Member Harris, is this 39,000 is a catch up. And then after that, it's going to be the estimate is around 10,000 per year, okay. which is in our budget. But this is okay. just back up to speed. Okay, so so we've been kind of behind for a while. Is that what you're saying? Correct, yes. Okay, okay. And we're playing catch up. All right, thank you. Bet. And Commissioner Stackhouse had a question. Yeah, so just curious where the drive behind the sports thing was coming from. Like that's a that's a whole new thing for me. Well, real quick, sideways, we talked about it at the fair. That was mentioned our fair retreat. Like, hey, what about esports at the fair? Yeah, that's a, it's a, no, an industry. it's been a thing for a while, and it's just now yeah. coming to, like, it's started out with the club. I went to the end, team, and why, they why have a right for that, too. It's like, it's like my personal trainer used to take me and do esports. We, we had a, we had an IPL that happened this last year for an esports company that was two, that was worth two million dollars. So, believe me, I, yeah. There's massive amounts of money. I just was curious. I, this is the first that I've heard of, of the like the city getting involved in kind of allowing the community to get involved in something like that. Because you're thinking about it, and you're like, we have football leagues, we have baseball leagues. I get this. I just, from a recreational standpoint, just was curious where it, where it was going. Why? Why? And so for us, I think. Um, you know, when you look at what's going on in the industry, you, you're looking at the industry and you're trying to um, see, and you're trying to bring things to the community that are successful other places in, in the industry. And so we don't want to just be stagnant and do the same old, same old, or buy the same old, same old. And then esports is a way for us to really step up and uh, especially when we're talking about how to the recreation center to really, again, uh, attract uh, a different demographic over to the center and then uh, be able to spend some some more positive light on the center and everything that it does. And so for us, it, it was really like, okay, how can we do something that we're not currently doing that we haven't done in the past that nobody else is really offering in the city. And so that's where we kind of landed on, hey, let's look into esports and see what we can really do. And it's been something that we've been talking about and kind of dabbling with for the last few years and now we potentially have some funding behind us so we can really go for it and really, really jump in. I think it's very cool, very, for lack of a better word, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just was like, yeah. I think, yeah, just curious. Yeah. And Tyrone's being very humble, but he brought this uh, idea to me. I'm sure it was part of a team conversation, but Tyrone uh, brought this forward easily three years ago, but not more. Was there anything at NRPA down the valley? Um, I, mean, I didn't get to go this year, but I didn't know. I know there was sessions on all sorts of stuff. Was there anything about esports that you guys attended at the NRPA this year? 
They had sessions on um, the esports and um, Ray Ray. She's she's our athletic coordinator. I had her um, attend one, so I don't I don't remember all of our conversations off the top of the head, but yeah. And then there's um, some cities that we can contact and really just kind of follow in on how they set things up and you know really get us going. And especially if we can't necessarily, because looking at some of the different prices, if you really go all in, I mean, it can go from what we have up into the hundreds of thousands to try and really get it. If you're looking to get just room where you can get an arena and so on and so forth. And so um, we'll be able to kind of piggyback off of a couple cities that have already got some stuff in place and that is affordable. And so we'll look to really just, again, everything get approved, really jump in and really get with those partners and really see how quickly we can bring everything to fruition um, in the next fiscal year. That's what I call it. All right, so you know, over some of the, so these are all the current projects we're working on that are going to be wrapped up prior to the end of this fiscal year. So, you know, spring into the first week in June, roughly. Uh, if anybody has any questions as I'm going through these, feel free to reach out. So the first one is the Thorpe Park restroom. It's a three stall apartment restroom. I don't know if you can even see, it's kind of north, it's just above the parking area. There's a little shady road. Yeah, for the various rooms. Uh, kind of out in that picnic grove there. So it's a three stall restroom, uh, two accessible units, and one standard unit. Uh, the expenditure is over 300000 and that's for site work, grading. There's some minor utility relocations that have to happen, uh, reworking some of the sidewalk and hardscapes leading up to the building. And that also includes the building and the placement of the building. So this is a we partnered with the same vendor that we worked with for the Buffalo Park restrooms a couple of years ago. It's a public restroom company. So if y'all aren't aware, they these are prefabricated units that they built in the warehouse in Nevada. Uh, we got the site prepped and ready to go with assistance from a contractor. And uh, they bring it in on the flat boy trailer. We essentially just bring it from the trailer um, and set it onto the prefabricated path that's already going to be in place. So if you look at the bottom right, that is an actual, that's a design pop up. So that is what the building itself is going to look like, the color scheme, the overhang out front. Is that like the one at Buffalo Park? It is. Okay. Yeah, it's just like you said, it doesn't have like the, we, did, we decided not to do the box facing, which is kind of more of a unique thing we did for Buffalo Park to okay. match like the entry building and everything. Plus there are some cost savings by not having to do that all the time. So uh, right now they're just, Recently talking to the contractors, so they've already done this. It's, it's a year-round restroom, so it has hydraulic flooring the slab. Same thing that's up at Buffalo Park that's held up for well. Uh, the slab and hydraulic flooring is now completed. Uh, they're currently building the CNU walls. So we, we did have time to get it. I got them a little too late for the presentation, but we do have some progress pictures from the vendor. As you can see on the side, there is a bottle filler. And uh, bringing found kind of built into the side of the restroom as well, which will obviously be, that's not going to be around the way rise, the same schedule as other amenities. But um, yeah, so the next step in this, like I said, the restroom is currently being built. They're making good progress on this whole part of parks, are just waiting on some uh, state approved plans, which we should receive in the next week or two to allow more of the details for the foundation work. So then we'll be reaching out to uh, city's JOC contractors. Uh, there's different contractors total vertical and horizontal that are on the list that the city reaches out to kind of makes the bid process a little easier on our end for procurement. Uh, so I'll be reaching for, we'll be reaching out to those contractors as soon as those plans are received. Obviously, some of this is gonna be like and buildings being built in a controlled environment, but you know, as soon as the snow does clear, there's a little worse. Some of the utility connections, uh, there's just slight like locations. We're gonna be doing those with park staff. But we will be contracting out for the foundation slide itself, just because it has to be more very precise and it's a lot of the scope of the park to actually do. Are you running sewer or? This, this is going to be sewer. Yeah, okay. Buffalo, we didn't have that option. Nice. Yeah, it's quite a lot. I don't know if you're looking at the composting toilets as well. You're yeah. actually in the city limits, you're required to have a sewer. Are you ready to have that? If yeah. it's available. 
right, and Jeff Research that option, as you guys like I said. And so everything was, we were initially, uh, I don't know, this has been in the works for quite a while. It was initially going to be a more sticks and bricks building up in that same location. So a lot of the late work has been done. The utilities have been relocated. Just now, with this design we're going with, which is more cost effective, and we've had a lot of great feedback from the ones we did at Buffalo Park. Uh, there were some slight constraints with having access with the crane where we did have to shift slightly north from where the initial building was placed, I mean, roughly 20 feet. So all the utilities that were located there, we just had to kind of shift those over to the foot crane. But uh, yeah, hopefully this is going in. We're still on schedule for it looks like probably by the first week in June, the building will be here on site. And once the building's in place, there'll be some minor tie-ins that we're going to have to do with some sidewalk work that the park staff will be returning to. Any questions on the bathroom? All right, next one is uh, Buffalo Park Accessibility Project, which was funded through the Arizona State Parks Grant. Uh, what it was is a reconstruction of the two-mile foot trail, essentially a new surfacing material, making it compliant and accessible for everybody. Uh, that part of the project is pretty much complete. There will be some touch-ups that we'll be doing come springtime, see how it fares throughout the winter, but there's going to be minor touch-ups we'll have to do on the trail itself. Uh, the six new universal exercise stations, uh, that's actually one of them that was installed. We happen to get all those installed just before the snow gate in January, so they all are in place. As you, by the time I took the picture, there was a couple feet of snow around that, that first piece of equipment right there. But it's really unique and accessible equipment. It's, it's unlike anything we've actually used. We have some <clears throat> accessible equipment like Bushmaster and some of the things we did already have at Buffalo Park. This is a new vendor we found that, uh, while it's all accessible, it's, it's really unique and just different than anything else we've had out there in the past. Uh, as you see here, roughly 65 to 70% completed. Uh, pretty much what's left is there's some hardscape work. Uh, there's four uh, ADA parking stalls that are going to be concrete in the parking lot, as well as some adjoining walkways from the parking lot down into the existing restroom building that's there. Uh, we did receive the design plans for those and uh, have reached out to some contractors in our JMC contract for the city. And, uh, we should have some responses and numbers back uh, probably before the end of February. It's a good looking design, isn't it? Oh, uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Who did the design? I'm just kidding. <laughs> so as soon as we get some numbers back from the contractors, there is a Part of the grant are matching. We, we will probably use the contractor for at least half of what we're not capable of doing in house. There's a possibility we can maybe set for the whole parcel out there. But once we get the numbers back and figure out what, what is feasible for the park staff to actually complete, as we are going to be getting into the busier season and timing, whether when there's going to have that happen. But uh, yeah, this is looking hopefully before the end of April, we'll be completing the grant project at Buffalo Park. As hopefully everybody's aware, the Parks Department does also maintain Citizen Cemetery. So uh, this is a, an additional columbarium for cremations that uh, we're in the process of procuring right now. Uh, it's, this is a more of a stock image, not an exact replica of what's going to be going up there, but will be adjacent to the existing columbarium that's already up there. And uh, you know, over the years, just that there has been an uptake in cremations those services. So this is more planning for the head because planning ahead because we are going to run out of niches in our current culinary probably in the next three to five years. So we're kind of being proactive and getting this this in place before it's too late. And uh, we are we're working on procurement right now. It's going to be a it's from Wilbur Precast. They do a lot of precast cemetery amenities uh, based out of Phoenix. Just working some final contest with the vendor. Uh, we'll be creating that purchase order and hopefully getting that purchase here in the next month, I would say. How many, uh, how many cremains will that accommodate? You know, the, I was looking that up. I couldn't find the exact number of niches in the new, but it, it'll it'll give us capacity for at least the next probably 10 to 15 years. Great, great, great. 
and uh, there'll be some site work that we're going to do with the parks department with some grading and just send the slab or like i said it's going to be a pre cast thing that'll be brought on the site but uh yeah that process once again weather dependent uh park staff will start rolling on the infrastructure to get that in place and it should be delivered hopefully obviously before the end of this fiscal year we're looking at probably about a May time frame to actually have a preliminary Okay, and the uh, pickleball courts at Wishmaster Park. Uh, as Rebecca talked about, the funding source earlier. Fortunately, we're able to accomplish this one this fiscal year. It's going to be an eight pack of lighted pickleball courts at Bush. You can see the general location just east of the current basketball courts. Part of this project and the price you're seeing also includes the resurfacing of the existing tennis and pickleball courts and the basketball courts, which are in need of. They're up for not replacement, but they're overhaul on the surfacing itself. Um, total expenditure about seven hundred thousand uh, dollars. We are partnered with General Acrylics for the design build. Uh, they've been our partners on many of our sport courts like this. They, they do a lot of our overlays on our tennis and basketball courts existing. So uh, there will be a neighborhood outreach just kind of let the community know what's happening out there and get any feedback they may have for us at that time uh, i know this is actually slated to go to council march 21st i believe and uh hopefully once the weather changes we'll be ready to roll with design build and uh hopefully breaking ground sometime early spring we get this done So, any questions on the projects that will wrap up this fiscal year? All right. So, future projects for the next fiscal year, as you've already alluded to, with the with the funding sources that are in place, we're going to kind of return our operating capital, to its original intent, you know, daily operations. So, some of the things we're looking at for next year, and this is mainly. Updating aging amenities in our parks, things that have been on our list for a while that really affect our daily operations. So, the first one is going to be a, a gate accessible entrance at for multi purpose field. If you're familiar with the field, uh, the gate just needs to be replaced. It's aging, it's getting harder and harder. It's our, our access point for getting on the turf. The fields are mainly open, but it's our access point for getting equipment out there for mowing and different turf operations. But coming up the concrete apron, uh, the accessible path goes right through the, the cinder barrier, which is the warning track up there, you know, about 10 feet wide, and just cinder that you have to, not the most accessible feature out there. So the thought is to kind of make, could go different ways, but it's either going to be more of like a, a compacted like foot type material, at least in an apron coming in through that entryway, or possibly even hard state, do some concrete work up there. There will be some irrigation and they have to be relocated slightly in order to make it happen. But uh, it also helps us to maintenance as well because that cinder, the warning track will mainly, we're not going to do the whole warning track, that will maintain that cinder aspect for the most part. But the entryway with an apron extending out in each direction, which will make it more accessible, plus also keep the cinder from kind of pouring back on that sidewalk, which as you can imagine is constantly a maintenance nightmare. Just, Every day, having to go up and blow or sweep the cinders off the sidewalk. New signage uh, at parks and puts kiosk locations. This is something we started a couple of years ago. And um, the kiosk locations, we're still trying to identify exactly what we're, which locations we're going to address this fiscal or next fiscal year with this money. But the kiosk is going away from kind of the wood frame and composite structures that are out there. And make it more aligned with our rusted steel, like a lot of lines, like the foots railing that we currently use, you know, the steel tubing, creating the, the kiosks out of that. And same thing with the park signage, uh, getting back to getting rid of or going away from the more composite, the old style signs we had at our park entryways, go into the, the plasma cut steel, with that rusted steel work, kind of mimicking what we've done in some locations already. And you know, the, if you see, they usually, they're surrounded by like the Google and I'll buy base block structure. If there's not already one there, make sure it fits. But if not, we'll create that Malphite structure that the new steel fences will slide into for the parks. What are the kiosks? I'm not familiar with what those are. Kiosks are more of a, 
the map locations. Okay. You know, the yeah. pillars that are kind of like a sign board. Essentially. Yeah. Okay. Uh, new grills at Fort Park. Uh, that's definitely needed. The grills up there are just aging and starting to deteriorate, They're getting harder and harder for patrons and staff to even use them at this point. Uh, you know, and they've been up there. Some of those grills are probably 20 years old. Or, you know, they are starting to even like rust through at the bottom. So this is going to include the the grills and the kind of the picnic grove area as well as replacing the community grill at the right hand so the bigger grill structure. And besides having an updated amenity, nicer grills, the ones that are up there are a hassle when we get fire restrictions because we actually have to fabricate steel plates, drill holes into the grill, and figure out a way to secure fabricated steel plates over the top. With the new style of grills, all come with a lockable cover, so we can just close the grill, put a padlock on it, and we're going to turn fire restrictions. And then, oh, excuse me, the Continental Park top lot play structure. This is something we started researching a couple of years ago while we were working with a girls softball. Um, it's an area in between, if you're familiar, the girls softball field, field five, and the two little league fields. There's kind of a culminating point where all the walkways come into the center location between the three fields. Currently, the play structure out there is a five to 12 year old play structure for essentially the bigger kids, and that's all the way in the back of the park. So there's been some concerns with parents. A, we don't have anything for the two to five year old play range. And B, if we did put something in the back, it's kind of set away from where all the activities going on in the fields. So it's not a place really the parents could go with their kids and have their kids play on this play structure while they're watching the games go on in these three fields. So it's a usable area, not the largest area, but it could definitely accommodate uh, two to five year old structure. Uh, still, we're going to do something with a baseball theme design. And it could be a small top lot structure or a series of two to five year old independent play equipment, something, but it's all going to have baseball theme too. Possibly even some baseball benches in that location. Whatever we do out there is probably going to have a sail shade or some short, sort of safe shade structure over the top, which A is good shade from the sun. And B, you are kind of in the middle of three baseball fields, so it also gives overhead protection from balls that do coming down. And yeah, that's our outlook for your next fiscal year. Skate park. Oh, I missed it. Sorry. Bushmaster Park Skate Park. Thanks for yeah. So if you're familiar with the skate park in the middle of Bushmaster Park, um, this is we're looking to get rid of the, the current fencing that's around the skate park itself. It's all, it's a kind of a steel picket fence almost that's wrapped in a coated chain link fence. It's all black. It's been there for a long time. It's been vandalized numerous times. It's meat, it's met its age at this point, but something needs to be done with it. So the thought is to kind of rip that fence out. And while we're not looking for necessarily a, a security fence around it, probably once again, going more towards the foot trail design, that steel fence, two or three rail, probably going to be a three rail, but it's more of, it opens up the area, maintenance is nightmare up against kind of that chain link fence, getting the weeds out, so it would give us a nice mow pattern where we'd actually just bring the in and smell of the weeds underneath the fence. But at the same time, uh, it kind of makes the, the whole skate area, it'll, it should make it more inviting from the outside of the park in and the inside of the skate park back out to the park. You know, right now it's kind of like, it's own little island in the center, and the fence is essentially hides everything that's going on there. It's not the most welcoming for people inside or out. Mm -hmm. So kind of open up that whole area, give it a nice aesthetic feel, and just make it more welcoming to like fit the aspect of the park itself. And it also gives a little bit of a security. We have had discussions with PD where they are on board as well, because it would be less room to hide, essentially, as the skate track, which hopefully could keep down some vandalism. But then when PD could roll down our service road at the north end of the park, have a clear visual just into the playground or into the skate park itself. Uh, same thing as patrons walking around the park. They'll be able to clearly see in there and could help deter some, some of the vandalism we've seen in the first You know, you get the pickleball established there, too. You know, no, forget about it. So, yeah, lot, lots of good things happen at Bushmaster. Yeah, so that's that's the 
defense of the state park improvements. And there is some thought as well, uh, not sure here, what we could do, but in the future, uh, once we take that fence down, it could give us some usable room to expand kind of on the top part of the skate track eventually, eventually, where it could be more hardscape and maybe some different features up on top of the walls as well. I, I wouldn't be represented here, but you mentioned the grills. So is Thor Park this year with the idea that you'll be yes. doing it? Okay. So and we've slowly been like doing this over the last couple of years, a lot of time out of our own operating budget as well, just because it's a need at this point. Yeah. Uh, we've done a lot in uh, Bushmaster. We started installing these grills. We have a couple now at uh, Fox Glen Park. We're just slowly trying to pack away because all of our parks have the same design and grill that once again, and a lot of it is derived. They could all be replaced, but it, it, it's going to help us save us so much time when we get fire illustrations, just being able to secure the grills properly without having to fabricate. Yeah. yeah. The ones you described are like the ones we have at Tide Hill for sure. Yeah. Like Both the box. Exactly. Yeah. Like the ones now are just like the open old can drum and stuff yeah. grills. Yeah. They're like three levels you can travel through. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, we could we fabricate and bolt a plate on top and then. They find a way to still light a fire underneath the grate itself, and that, that becomes just cooking service. For me. Yeah, you yeah, know, there's still a couple of those in Cheshire too. Yeah. That no one ever uses. No, I know. I think I've had an experience a couple of years ago, and like leaned on one that was spoken. It just wasn't like fastened around. It just kind of like fell. I was like, oh, okay, that's right. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> cool. Like, those are great projects. Uh, they great. commissioners. Any questions? Council Member uh, Harris, do you have any questions for Gino on the parks plan? I'm sorry, what was your question? Do you have any questions on the parks uh, plan? No. Open space? no. Nope, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Yeah, great work. Good, good, good evening, everyone. Be here with you guys tonight. I'm Robert Wallace, and I work for the open space section as a supervisor. And we just brought on two new employees in January. We have Sylvia Struess, who's now our open space coordinator, and Sarah Holditch, which is our open space educator. She's in a temporary one year grant funding position, and Sylvia's a premier position moving forward. So, really excited to be moving forward a number of our projects that I'm sure tonight. Uh, I'm going to introduce just a couple of projects at each of our properties. We have about 3,000 acres of open space, especially in there on the east side of the town, just behind the town of Linden Mall is located. We can go on base just south of Buffalo Park there, Observatory Base, uh, which is our largest green resort at about 2,200 acres in West San So, our um, first project that I'll share with you are on McMillan Mesa. This is a partnership, a restoration project. With APS to address the heavily impacted areas in the ground with APS Mount Ellen substation. It's a three year project that so far has included the removal of old road building material, cleanup of trash and location retreatment in ground operation proceeding. It's about uh, an acre of property uh, kind of around the station. And then there used to be an old access road before. Uh, the road continued across Cedar there, where you can see the yellow swatch. So um, it's going to be receding that, and then receding kind of the west side of the APS station. The project will continue this year, and that will include receding with native vegetation and additional amenities and plant treatment. So, our projects in Little Mesa. Uh, this is an interest. I included a couple of projects just because they seem to overlap all the parks. Yeah, this is a, a good one here. We, we regularly do big trash cleanups out of McMillan Mesa. We have a, a mission with some abandoned camps typically in illegal camping on the east side of Mason, mostly kind of just below where the Foots Trail is on our way down to Isabel Street there. And we partnered pretty successfully with the police department and parks and the Roman Catholic Church to the south. And so FUSD classrooms can probably actually come out and volunteer to do some big cleanups uh, on our property and also just along the south end of Buffalo Park where they, they call it Buffalo Park over area there. And then to the south where the church is, um, just east of where the Roman Catholic Church is located. That's a big 
fairly open as we were watching our changes. So we first started this project about three years ago, and when we first cleaned up these areas, we just pulled out many, many yards of trash. And the last cleanup that we held last year was just noticeably less trash. So we're making progress, and it's just really exciting. Uh, this is really going to be an ongoing need, it's not really ever completed, um, but we'll keep continuing this up again this year, and that'll be a great project to start doing for us. So you guys can do to prevent the camps, like, or like, it, uh, I don't know, um, it seems like when you're dealing with the after effects, and uh, what kind of efforts made to try to curb that behavior so that there's less cleanups? We do have some signage that we put out there, and then we're, um, we're going to be applying for a grant for signage for the Mill and Mesa that only permanent, and no camping type signs along the areas of heavy use of Mesa. So we look forward to installing that. I think that is part of the reason that that's helped our just our temporary centers out there. I think also just our presence out there on a regular basis really helps. Um, and then when, when we do a big cleanup, we do work with the police department. They go out a few days in advance. They sign uh, all active camps out there, let them know of additional services in town, and um, just also let them know that we're going to be camping this all the time. So that kind of gives out the opportunity to folks that are out there on a regular basis a chance to, to move to a new location that is very cool. I think just continue. Um, yeah, so uh, the next property, Observatory Mesa, it's a 2200-acre regional preserve. We currently only got a 5.8 miles of formalized trail. Although the area really received substantial use because proximity to the neighborhoods and, and the downtown area. And there's a lot of social paths and uh, old roads and things like that from the time period uh, before the, the, the city was able to purchase the property from the city. So we've been working on developing recommendations uh, for this area that include recommendations to repair, repair the existing designated trails, restoration of about eight miles of unauthorized trails, restoration of about 12 miles of abandoned roads. Uh, or just places where people are, you know, driving off the main road. Additional formal access to help accomplish our community goal of providing a 10-minute walking access time for open space for the residents. And approximately 26 miles of formal trail throughout the property. And then uh, the plan also is working on making suggestions for ADA trail alignments in partnership with Lowell Observatory. And it recommends uh, adaptive mountain biking also and then some additional trail signage and additional parking areas for the residents. Two different locations. Our next step will be setting up our stakeholder meetings with some of the neighborhoods and some of our partners to, to go over the plan and get uh, feedback in the next couple of months. Um, and we look forward to having the Parks and Rights Commission's input in that process. Some of the topics that you may especially be interested in are the parking access along Route 66, the general location of the Galveston Branch, which I think is identified for the regional park location in the future. We have also identified that area as a potential parking area for folks that are traveling from outside the community or from their location. Uh, and uh, look forward to providing a connection over to Observatory Mesa from. And possibly there, the commission yeah. might remember that project as if they have made detention based on <laughs> thereby the new public works here. And uh, mm -hmm. another kind of area of interest in that we um, wanted to bring what on is we share kind of a problem boundary with the left part of the bus, mobile service for a car flow comes up to the general facility where the facility where the, the base golf course is. Um, and so there are several unauthorized routes that can come on that hillside and that are being used by the public. And so the plan does address that area. This is a multi-jurisdictional uh, plan, so it plans not only for city property, but we are working with Lowell's property, which is in the corner of the section of pink, and then four service with the central parcel and then the parcels to the best as possible. Across there, or trails across that property. So, I think 
big, uh, big project that we're moving forward. Um, the next one also is on Observatory Mesa. We, we got awarded a basic grant from the state of around $220,000. The project is to treat leads throughout the Observatory Mesa Regional Preserve. We're excited about this because we really want to have a sense of where the leads are before we do any trip implementation. So we're treating leads along with the implementation when we do get money. The grant, the grant outlines partnership opportunities with parks to treat shared boundaries. Um, so they'll we'll be covering uh, for Thornton Park uh, treatments in their base areas. And uh, this map kind of outlines out four parcels that are open space and each of the different colors that green and blue and their colored polygons designate the lead and that's what we So we will be working, this is a two year project. We'll be working on and we'll focus on problematic invasive species and then uh, the treatment of those and then reseeding of high infested areas. So most of the leads are associated with past prescribed uh, thinning for the area where we have um, chip layers that are built up. So we're going to be looking at reseeding these locations to help reduce invasive in these areas. What are the predominant invasive species in the middle? Bull thistle is the primary one. Um, any acres of that. Uh, scotch thistle, lesser problem. Musk thistle, diffuse napweed, closer down by the board on the eastern side. And then also where the Fort Park Annex location is, that area has a lot of uh, napweed as well. The grant. Uh, actually identifies that particular area to do some uh, additional work there as well. Uh, and then field, some small amount of field buying need to be able to eradicate. And then the places that we're going to revegetate, we're going to do that with blue brand the bottle, bottle of rice grass, small field areas and all the rest of the world. So that's a couple of projects for Observatory Mesa at Picture Canyon. We uh, we were awarded an Arizona State Park grant that will help us um, implement some work there. Um, the Recreational Trails Program grant, and we got awarded just a little over $26,000. So this funding will enable in space section to address some delayed maintenance there, including renovation of and maintenance of our existing trails. It will mitigate and restore damage areas surrounding the trails, such as like those roadbeds or unauthorized trails. There's some funds for additional signage for, for enforcing existing rules and regulations and uh, some interpretive signs. It will provide some trail information and trail wayside finding signs in the law. You'll work it out. Thinking that the project that we hope to have this on some of the schedule for this spring. Uh, real quick, it looks like uh, Council Member Harris has uh, her hand up. Okay. Uh, Council Member, do you have a question for uh, Robert? You know, more of a maybe a question than a comment. So, <clears throat> in terms of our open space and some of the work that you're going to be doing with the grant that you uh, received. Are you all at any time working with uh, NAU? I know that there's a ton of environmental science classes and botany classes and all other other kinds of classes where faculty might want to get their students out and maybe even, you know, do some work to assist um, as a class project. I'm not going to assume that every faculty member knows what you're doing and that these resources are available to them in their class. Thanks for the, the question, Council Member. Uh, we do some work in partnership with NAU. We have an, an ability for any any classroom setting to get a permit to do educational research in the preserve. NAU hasn't taken advantage of that for a number of years now, but we do work with a number of elementary and middle schools to provide permits for doing a little bit of water chemistry analysis at Future Canyon. And then um, we uh, we also have 
Chunk with Sarah from Sarah Holdich, who's our educational coordinator with that grant funding position. So she'll be working to do more education related to high school and middle schools at our different locations. In addition to that, uh, you know, one need that we have is to do assessments of some of our properties for a aquatic analysis, an assessment of amphibians. And that is something that we could probably really utilize classroom help from many of you. That's our kind of long term goal with this campaign. It's a great suggestion. Thank you. Our other big project that's taking place at Fisher King, we just finished wrapping up a survey of our property boundary where we need fence repairs. So you can see here there's a lot of down or missing fence. Um, this is really for two. two Reasons to reduce vehicle trespass and to protect and preserve it in the future. So, also we hope to uh, work with neighboring property owners um, to implement any missing sections of fence, especially in high priority areas where we're getting illegal motorized property. Is there a particular area where they're encroaching? Yeah, and then in the left hand corner up there and the is that the west corner there? There's traffic coming in along that boundary. And there's some development that's taking place just to the west of that as well. Um, so we're kind of along that corner, that boundary. And then also in the, the northeast corner where there was an old road coming into the reserves and other location it's in the people where I started. And then the whole almost the entire southern part. Of the preserve is one that's a big not as big of an issue as far as long term. So that covers our kind of a big projects just for our, our main properties. Some of our longer term projects, we are working on uh, moving forward in space system planning, uh, which is partnering with FOOTS to improve access to our existing open space. And acquiring additional open space in some cases to provide for the community. So our long-term vision is to have an integrated connected open space system for the community. We really would love to have 10 minute walking access time wherever you live by that to an open space property. I know parks are my goal as well. Um, and that would hopefully consist of regional preserves. I would label all three of our properties regional preserves right now. Those are larger properties that provide benefits to the community and to, to, to travelers and visitors as well. Connectors, so you can see that we have a designated kind of a connector for Alan Fisher King in there, the East Center Bay out over to Baltimore Park, and also uh, like Miller Mesa, and then from the Buffalo Park area over to sort of Mesa, south down to Fort Tuckle, which is the, the block there in the left hand corner of the map, and then south of uh, the I 40 area, um, back over to Picture Street. So the three blocks over on uh, the southeastern corner are not open space. Those have been uh, identified by the Open Spaces Commission as potential open space for the community in that general region of the community since we, we don't have any open space for that be part of the community. So if or when we get funding, we'll look at continuing some of these connections and building out some additional space. This is a really big long term project. So those will be some of the connectors. And then the plan also looks at neighbor woods uh, or uh, a complementary type of open space, which is preserving a tract of open space land that might not benefit the entire community like the picture community does, but is very important for the immediate neighborhood for, for getting out and walking and exercising that land and dogs. And so it looks at important property with that general property mode. Then our, our last kind of long term project is educational partnership with the place that is like school district uh, to complete STEAM education and field trips for partner titles and schools. Our one year grant money position is getting this off the ground. So we've been 
doing some work um, with younger students. We partnered with all of them to target all of our grade classrooms and offer them an in portion uh, visit right, to their classroom department and then take them out to one of our open spaces for future. It's really to expand that to both of those schools and basically walk to your target more diverse pages. So we looked at we hope that that will be a long term point. Thanks, Kenny. So, but are you going to be utilizing any of those existing roads or paths that are created up on Observatory Mesa as part of the new trail system? Yes, we are. Uh, the main roads, I-15 and I-15A, will be uh, kept uh, for admin use um, for like managing and prescribing birds up there. And then we will make those also accessible to walking. So they require repairs. Adaptive mountain biking requires like a wider path, so uh, there is thought of getting some of those existing roads fully And uh, there is a it's a little hard to see, but uh, there is a connection over the the Fort Valley area, which could be a commuter route through the Mesa and dropping down Mars Hill uh, into into the park area. All right, I will wrap this up here so we can get you all home. I um, wanted to let you all know and you requested information on what our budget priorities are outside of our operating budgets and our BBB recreation. This is things that we are um, prioritizing in our asks for next year as additional either personnel or funding. So we did put in a request for a new position. It's a park, we're calling it a park ranger, but it's not intended to be like a, a roaming police officer with enforcement authority, more like a, a concierge type uh, person that's just out there on the weekends when we have events and athletics going on. Um, lots of activities. This would be like a Thursday through Tuesday schedule, afternoons and evenings. A uh, year round position is the same level as a park supervisor or open space supervisor. Um, and this person would also manage our trash and bathroom team. Um, right now, that team is managed by our cemetery supervisor, which just doesn't work very well. It's moved, that team has moved around a lot. Um, so this ranger would take on uh, those duties as well. And just ensure, just really help us out. It provides uh, improved level of service on weekends, especially that we just don't have out there right now. Uh, the interesting part about that funding, that, that request is that we are proposing to fund it with internal, um, Funding, so we're not asking for additional general funds. So we have a number of uh, vacant positions, as I'm sure you've heard us talk about. Our maintenance worker has been previously hard to fill. Uh, recently, that's uh, finally loosening up a little bit. Uh, but we also have a number of um, contracted personnel or like maintenance workers that we would hire from a temporary agency uh, that do work for us, but aren't employees of the city. Well, those have been impossible to fill as well. And so we're looking at taking those funds and providing some of those same services in an improved capacity, but with our own internal staff. So that's our new personnel request, the only one for the whole division this year. Um, we are also, um, so we have a number of requests that we end up having to make every single year because the city can only find funding one year at a time for these. And so even though it's an ongoing cost, like utility increases, that's an ongoing cost or as minimum wage increases are contracted 
um, services increase, portable restrooms, all of that that impacts all of the local businesses that we use. That goes up too, but um, we continue to fund it one, one year at a time. So we're requesting again for those to uh, be funded ongoing. Um, this also includes some uh, things at the recreation centers and then uh, Roberts got a request for uh, some one time funding to be converted to ongoing to help his base budget with maintenance needs for open space. The only capital request that we, we requested this year was to help us work at the cemetery roadway system. Um, two years ago, I think we were able to do a pilot project where uh, we used some recycled product and some internal staff. We used it as a, a training opportunity with our streets partners and um, it did beautifully and now we'd like to expand on that so we're just requesting for the purchase of the material we can continue it as a training opportunity so it's not super expensive but we have to do something at the cemetery we do collect fees at the cemetery for perpetual care um, my request of the budget team uh, when we present to them in february is that we use some of those funds those revenues to come back and actually right now they just kind of go straight into the general fund. So let's remind them that we do have this perpetual care fee actually feed that straight back into the cemetery for some improvements. Um, so that wraps up our priorities uh, for next year. That's all we have for you. This presentation, this presentation. You guys are doing a lot of great things uh, currently and, and for the future. That's so cool. Uh, and, and the funding mechanisms, uh, everything's so well thought out. Uh, I'm, I'm very impressed. Um, colleagues, other uh, commissioners, any? Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, the, the excitement of seeing our project priorities uh, budgeted for and planned for is. Uh, I think we're going to make some citizens very happy in the coming years, and that's what it's all about. Um, doing as much as we can for the citizens of Texas. So I, I think you guys are nailing. Yeah. And then from my uh, fellow commissioners on the subject, before we move to the next item and get to the wrapping up part of this. Yeah. Once again, yeah, great work. Thank you so much. Um, Council member uh, Harris, do you have uh, a report for us? Any updates, anything to discuss on behalf of the council? Not at this time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Council uh, Parks Pro's team, for sending your monthly highlights. Any uh, commissioners have anything that they want to pull out uh, to discuss or anything all about those highlights? You'll notice that was the January report. That yeah. was because we're meeting earlier in the month. We don't really have the February report. Okay. The, the only thing I would request is when possible, when relevant and possible, put in, throw in as much uh, quantitative data as you can. Uh, I really like, you know, reading some numbers, facts and figures. So like when talking, you're talking about the built sports, uh, well, you know, how is registration looking or the numbers like I didn't think that it doesn't have to be like grids or data. I just like uh, some numbers, you know, so when you guys, if the report on the membership drive, uh, thanks, you know, some, have that go. Uh, I like the qualitative stuff, but I, you know, quantitative helps me as well, just kind of, and then we can look over year over year kind of stuff, but like full moon, like had 17 participants. I like seeing that, you know, that was really cool for me. Also, how do you guys got risk management by snow police? We do full moon hikes at the county. We're like, how did they get that going? What do we got to do to get some some of that going on for our full moon hike? So well done on on the programming and, and stuff. That would be my only my only recommendation, if, if possible. And it doesn't have to be obnoxious, but some data. Noted. Thank you. Thank you. And we do we try we're trying to find a balance, as you know. This this report style is new for us. We're kind of flowing between a data driven report and a or personal or project field report. Um, so we appreciate that feedback. 
So either way, I love reading them. They're, they're really great, um, the reports you guys provide. Uh, anything, commissioners to staff or vice versa? Uh, uh, informational items, anything going on that we should be all aware of? One item for you, uh, I will be presenting um, to the city council in partnership with our uh, community development and real estate manager partners um, tomorrow. There is a council discussion. We're asking for direction on um, specifically a cell tower company or a, what do you call those, a telecommunications company has requested to use the expansion area of Cheshire Park for a new tower. They're going to put that across the street, across the hill, on the museum's property. They've requested to use ours. Really? So we're just going to bring it to council to see if they have any appetite for us doing a solicitation. So I'll be presenting our plan uh, for that area and quite possibly my opinion on the appropriateness of that type of uh, use in the, in the park. I have no details, but we have one at Tut Hill. And so Cynthia may have, you know, if you haven't already, but yeah, we have we have one of those uh, Fort Tut Hill cell phone tower and receive revenue um, for having in, it there. And the city would as well. It's, um, since I didn't agendize it, we can't talk about it too much, unfortunately, but uh, their idea is to put it right smack dab in the middle. And we can't have that in the middle of the field, obviously. Um, the, the size that they have, I just don't see that there's a place for it to fit and for us to still get our priorities. John Mary just said They're asking for 2,500 square feet. So right. at 55 by 50 with a block CME wall around it. It's just a hard location. Yeah. But that part of town needs additional service. Right. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Presentations tomorrow? Yes. So, good luck. I'll keep you posted. I thought they were putting that proposal initially across the street. They might have asked them. multiple property owners. We just, when they bring it to the city, we, we feel like we need to take it to the council for their yeah. decision. So, heads up, Council Member Harris. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anything else from the pro staff? Commissioners, anything on our end? How's the friends? You said you're meeting with Regina. Yeah. It's on the agenda, but just you are working on working on working <laughs> working with her. It's we're scheduled to do the 22nd. I'm wanting to include her, but also wanting to move forward. So we're kind of Balancing that. This project being a friends group for supporting the city of Life Center personnel. Um, that's that's a project that Josh has, has been working on. Um, and Regina, count, former council person Salas, but uh, the one who helps start the friends of Cookie County Park. So that's, she's a great resource. Uh, and so, yeah, so Josh is working on that. Thank you, Josh, for taking the lead on that project. And I don't have anything of note. So, hey, co chair, anything? No, I can give you an update on the library where we stand with that. So that's been put on hold to, for the winter so, since we got so much snow. And they're still able to resume working, but it won't be taken out of their schedule. They had 15 days left to complete the project, and so we're running out of time. So with all the things, it's primarily removing snow. So. They'll jump back on it in the spring and uh, finish it up. Hopefully, in May. All right, uh, and then so agenda items. Our next meeting will be on March twentieth. It looks like, uh, and we've discussed uh, likely in April or May a discussion on fees, uh, the cost recovery policy. Um, other items that we would like to discuss in March. Uh, staff, do you have anything you'd like to? I'm sure we will think of something oh, yeah, if we I can see. get that user fee presentation ready for you by then. We can do that. Um, we would love 
getting feedback. Email for requests. I'll email if I can think of it. I'm always interested in the programming. You know, what what does the summer programming look like? Or is there anything new for the youth? For the, you know, I'd love to know if there's anything new coming out or is everything kind of roughly what it what it is. Um, but yeah, programming I would be uh, coming up in the this parks and rec busy season. Maybe we could do a joint presentation between recreation and events and marketing. No. Just an overview would be cool too. Yeah, I don't get into the weeds too much, but yeah. Right. What do you guys got going on? Especially as we get the county plan our summer camps. <laughs> we kind of like to know what you guys are doing. <laughs> Selfishly. Insider information. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> do no duplication. That's our goal. <laughs> want to uh, augment. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If anything else comes up, uh, we'll you can do it via email. Okay. Cool. Again, thank you guys so much for being here. Um, and uh, I don't think we'd make a motion to adjourn. Right? We just, we just adjourn. Yeah. Adjourn. So I adjourn. Thank <laughs> you. Very very I know. I know. <laughs> My very valuable death. Your talent. Yeah. That will be virtual part for the next one. I'm glad I was able to attend in person. It was nice to see you.